Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, this lecture is a continuation of uh, the topic uh, related to trigonometric uh, representation of complex numbers. In this particular lecture, we'll talk about exponentiation of complex numbers in trigonometric form. And obviously, this is part of the whole course of advanced mathematics presented on unizor.com. Um, where I actually suggest you to watch this lecture from because the site contains for every lecture there are notes which basically serve as a textbook. Uh, well, besides obviously there are exercises and exams, etc. All right, so um, we continue talking about trigonometric representation of, uh, of uh, complex numbers and we'll talk about raising into power. Now, last lecture was um, very much introductory I was just talking about how uh, complex numbers are represented in trigonometric form or polar form, if you wish, which looks like this, where R is an absolute value or, or, or modulus and, and phi is um, the argument or phase of the complex number. Um, now, raising into power. Um, Obviously, it's based on multiplication. And multiplication, as we know from the previous lecture, is very easy to accomplish in uh, uh, polar coordinates in, in trigonometric form. Because if you have two different numbers, R1 and R2, cosine phi 2 plus I sine phi 2, then their multiplication is very easily expressed in this format. You multiply the modulus, modula, and you add the arguments. Now, analogous formula of multiplication in canonical representation looks much more complex. It's AC uh, minus BD as a real part and complex part is BC plus AD. It's a little bit more cumbersome and you can't really remember it quite well, but this is a very natural and it has a geometric representation. Remember, if R and, uh, and R1 and R2 are e equal to 1, then basically we are just turning um, the uh, point on the unit circle which is represented by this particular uh, representation where this is the angle of phi 1. We are turning by angle phi 2 getting phi 1 plus phi 2. So multiplication um, on the unit circle with R1, R2 is equal to 1 uh, is basically a turning a rotation by this particular point. Okay, now this is multiplication and as you see it's easy and that's why it's very easy to define uh, the power. Now we will st start with obviously natural power, integer positive uh, power n and what does it actually mean? Well. I would like to make a very interesting comment here. Um, what we are talking about, we are talking about certain things which uh, needs de de definition. Um, like, for instance, if we are talking about multiplication of the real numbers, we start with multiplication of integer numbers, actual natural numbers, positive integer. Then we add the negative based on certain properties of the multiplication which we would like to preserve. And then we expand it to rational numbers, then the irrational numbers. And same thing with any other operations. First it's defined for a simple case. And then we examine the properties in that simple case and we're trying to define for more complex um, objects in the same manner to preserve these properties. Now, what are the properties of the exponentiation of raising into power which we would like to preserve. Well, obviously we know that something like this 
Now we did prove this for rational num uh, for actually for all real numbers, but let's talk about ra rational numbers, where m and n are any rational numbers, right? And a was uh, a positive number. Now we are talking about complex numbers and raising the complex numbers into cer certain powers, and that's not easy, obviously. If you remember within the real numbers we did not really even allow the negative numbers as a base primarily because we cannot raise minus one into power one half which is actually a square root in complex numbers we can allow uh, even that because this is equal to i in the complex numbers right because i square is equal to minus one by definition again we are defining we are expanding our universe but we are trying to preserve the good properties which we already observed in the smaller universe which we had before. So, now we are expanding to complex numbers and we would like to preserve properties like this and properties like this and properties like this. So these are very good properties of the exponents as they are defined in a simple case with, with, with real numbers or even with integer numbers if you wish even with positive integer numbers because that's where it comes from it comes from the positive integer numbers where all these are obvious right because positive integer number um, raised into positive integer number is basically a multiplication by itself m times and n times which is actually m plus n times right so for simple case it's obvious and then we expand the universe to preserve these properties i'm going to preserve these properties for the complex numbers in trigonometric form and i will define these operations correspondingly and again let me start from something simple and simple is where we are talking about raising the complex number into positive integer power which is basically multiplication by itself n times and we know how the multiplication looks like in trigonometric form in polar coordinates right so if i have r times cosine phi plus pi sine phi if i want to multiply it by the same number i will have to uh, multiply my uh, absolute values right and I have to add the angles so Phi and another Phi so it will be 2 Phi right so that's the formula of raising to a power of 2 now how about power of n Well, obviously, it's a trivial exercise in induction. You can define, you can, you can actually prove this by induction, right? So that's easy. For n is equal to 1, that's basically uh, 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 an identity, right? Um, now, for n is equal to k, if we assume it, then a n is equal to k plus 1 would be the same thing for n multiplied by this single expression, right? And that means that we will have to um, multiply the absolute value of 1 times another, which is r to the n times one more r uh, or to the k actually r, r to the k plus one and this would be k and again plus one so it will be k plus one so the formula is trivially proven by by induction okay so that's fine this is trivial now let's expand it to different values of exponent first let's talk about negative exponent right so let's say we want to do this we want to define it in some way so it's reasonable and all the laws which I was talking about before 
are supposed to be preserved. Now, how can we do it? Okay. Let's just think about exactly the same way as we were talking about the similar problem in real numbers. What I did was, I used this property Now, what if my n is equal to minus m? I will have 8 to the power of m plus minus m is equal to a to the m times a to the minus m, right? According to this formula. If I would like to preserve this property, this must be true. If I want to expand to negative um, exponent. Now, what is this? This is a to the power of 0, which is, again, there is a property of it being equal to 1, which means that this a to the minus m is 1 over a to the power of m. And this might be a definition. If this is a definition of negative exponent, then everything uh, is, is fine. All my rules, laws, whatever properties are preserved. Now, I will do exactly the same thing here. So, I define this as 1 over r times cosine phi plus i sine phi. Okay, right? So, that's easy. Now, let's think about how I do this. Well, 1 over, uh, yes, to the power of n, sorry. Now, 1 to the power of, uh, 1 to the r to the power of n is retained. But now, I have to express this somehow. In the power of minus n. Uh, sorry, to the power of n. Now let me go to the properties of multiplication of the complex numbers in trigonometric form. What do I know about this? Well, I already know that this is equal to cosine n phi plus i sine n times phi, right? So, here I can replace it with with this n phi n phi okay fine so let's talk about this for instance I have this expression What if I will multiply it by by this expression? What happens? Well, we know that if I'm multiplying two different complex numbers in trigonometric form, my absolute value is multiplied, which is 1 and 1. But my angles, my phases, my arguments are added together. So what will be? Will be cosine of sum of this, which is 0, plus I sine 0. 
which is equal to, now this is 1, cosine of 0 is 1, sine 0 is 0, so this is equal to 1. So what follows is that 1 over this is this. So I can replace this with this. And to be even more explicit, I will use this. 1 over r to the n is r to the power minus n. That's the real number's power, right? So what do we have right now? We have this same exactly situation. I have this uh, exponent, which is negative. And the formula basically looks exactly as if it was the positive. So I raise my absolute value to this power and I multiply my phase, my argument, by this power as a multiplier. So the formula is exactly the same as just a second ago I was talking about uh, for positive uh, integers. So that's quite interesting actually. The formula is exactly the same for positive and for negative. You raise the argument uh, sorry, the absolute value to the power and you multiply the argument by the power. Okay, fine. How about rational? Well, let's start rational slowly. Let's do only rational as 1 over n. So, my purpose is r cosine phi plus sine phi to the power 1 over n. How can that be defined properly? Okay, well, let's just think about let's take this and raise it to the power of n. What happens? Well, we know how to raise to the power of n, right? We just used it. Regardless, by the way, of, of the fact whether n is positive or negative, we have to raise this uh, absolute value, the modulus, to this power. So r to the power of 1 over n to the power of n would be what? We have to multiply, right? This is r. So the result would be, the absolute value would be r. And the phase, the argument, I should multiply my angle, my phase, by the power, right? So it would be cosine phi over n times n plus i sine phi over n times n, right? Now, what, what can we say about this? Well, if this to the power of n is equal to this, now by definition, what is 1 over power of 1 over n? It's a number which is being raised to the power of n would give me this one, right? If I will raise this to the power of n, my powers are supposed to be multiplied, right? It will, it will be 1 over n times n, which is 1, which is just exactly this piece. So, what I can say from here is that this is equal to this piece. Since, as I just said, if I multiply, if I will raise this to the power of n, I will get, I will get this which means this raised to the power of 1 over n will give me this. Now, again, let me repeat. These are definitions. These are not theorems. They are definitions of new operations, how to raise the complex number into 
uh, positive integer to negative integer to a rational uh, power. Uh, now, irrational would also be nice, obviously, to uh, complete this particular thing. Well, that's a little bit more involved, and as I was explained um, in the irrational power of real numbers, uh, real positive numbers, actually, um, you have to really use the limit theory. Uh, and every irrational number can be considered as a limit of certain sequence of rational numbers. And basically the approach should be exactly the same thing. Uh, so you can define the irrational power as a limit uh, of rational powers uh, where the powers, where the rational powers uh, tend to the irrational number, if, if, if there is one. All right? So, um, these are formulas for uh, raising uh, the, this particular complex number in trigonometric uh, form in, in any uh, power. Uh, we had uh, integer positive, negative, we had this one. Um, now, I would like to again point that the form, exactly the form uh, of, of this formula, is exactly the same. You, multi you, you raise the uh, absolute value to this power and you multiply the argument uh, by this power as, as, a, as a multiplier. So it's, it's exactly the same formula. Now, um, the, last one, the last one which I would like to add is to put m over n here, right? Now, what happens in this case? Well, these are just two different rules. You have to apply them sequentially because what does it mean if you do m m over n? You can consider it as uh, as a to the power of m and then to the power of one over n, right? Or vice versa, first to the power of one over n and then the result would be in the power of m. So you you're applying two different formulas. One formula gives you Let's say we are considering this as 1 over n and to the power of m. I have too many parentheses and brackets, etc. So I have this to the power of 1n and then to the power of m. Now, <coughs> what is this? Okay, first we raise it to the power of 1 over n to get this one. Now this I have to raise to the power of m and I get what? My absolute value is supposed to be raised to the power of m, which is this, and my uh, And my argument is supposed to be multiplied by by m plus i sine pi over n times m. So again, you see exactly the same formula. You uh, raise your absolute value to the power, whatever the power of the whole complex number is, and you use this power as a multiplier for, for the phase, for the argument, right? So, in general, I can basically derive this formula for any kind of power, um, any kind of real power. Uh, integer, negative, rational, irrational, r times cosine phi plus i sine phi to the power of x, let's say, where x is any real number, it is r to the power of x times cosine x phi plus i sine x phi. Well, that's better to use the brackets here. Yeah. 
So this is a general formula for all real x. Now, and that's very important right now. You see, in trigonometric form, that looks quite easy. Try to do it in um, regular canonical representation, like a plus b i. Even even this, something like to the fifth degree, even this would look extremely complex because you have to multiply a plus b i five times by itself. It's it's a lot. It's a to the fifth degree and etc. I mean, it's a it's a big formula which obviously nobody remembers. But in the trigonometric form, in the polar form, that's raising into any kind of a power exponentiation, the operation of exponentiation raising into power, um, looks really simple, right? Well, and that was my point actually for today's lecture. What I suggest you to do is go to this website and read the notes for this lecture. It's like reading the chapter in the textbook, just to make sure that you properly understand it. Um, so what, what do we know right now? We know that we can use the, any kind of an exponentiation to a real power for complex numbers. So if something like minus 1 to the power of one half was impossible to do in the realm of real numbers. In the complex numbers, it's very easy to do. What is it? Let me just, you know, make an example. Minus one is here. So it's one times cosine of the angle of pi plus i sine pi, right? So forget about 1. You don't need it. Now, I'm raising it to the power 1 half, which means what? Absolute value is 1, so it doesn't matter. I will have cosine pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Now, this is 0, right? And this is... 1. So I have i. You see? i to the power of 2 gives me minus 1. Square root of minus 1 is i. So in complex numbers, it's easy. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.